My name is Mark Chalmers, and I'm president and CEO of Energy Fuels. Energy Fuels is a, a critical mineral company that is uh, centered around uranium, but is rapidly building a, um, a rare earth production capabilities at the White Mesa Mill in Utah and securing properties around the globe to feed that mill. So it's a really exciting company story. There is no one like Energy Fuels. Normally, you would invest in a uranium company or a rare earth company, but with energy fuels, you get an investment in both. Mark, I am so pleased to have you on here. I think we've got ourselves a little bit of a scoop. You've just announced um, the base resources deal. Um, I think it's super, super exciting. Uh, you've done what you said you were going to do. I mean, tell us, tell us about the deal. Well, it's a merger with 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 base resources, and base resources has a, a quite a long history of being a successful heavy mineral sand producer in Kenya. The Qualia project it's coming to an end, but they also have been uh, working to develop the Toliara project in Madagascar, which is a very large, known, high grade. Um, very profitable project when it finally gets uh, all its approvals. And uh, it has a lot of monocyte, Matt, a lot of monocyte. So we see it as fitting in right into our wheelhouse with the acquisition of Bahia and uh, soon to be hopefully uh, the Donald Project in uh, Victoria, Australia, to add uh, Toliara and the base team to our um, company is, is, is really exciting. So I think that it just, it's showing how we're building scale and scale of world significance. I've been saying that for a long time. We want to be world significant, and this is another step. So, uh, you know, watch this space, and, and we're also getting a full team of people that actually are operating the heavy mineral sands business and are, have been profitable for the last number of years. Tell, tell us um, a little bit about what we've interviewed base resources since 2019. Um, we, we understand it, but perhaps some of the listeners uh, and viewers will be interested in saying, well, what is, what is the size of the opportunity here? What do we know? Well, I mean, it bases um, on uh, DFSs and PFSs indicate that it could have EBITDA of between about 350 to 400 million U.S. per year. It's a long-term project, like 40 to 50 years of resource. Um, the monazite, contained monazite, is literally 2% uh, monazite in the HM. And uh, they're planning on uh, recovery when the project goes into production, around 22,000 tons of monazite per year. And they have a resource of 1.4 million tons of monazite in an inferred resource of another almost 800,000 tons of monazite. So this is a big project. And it's very simple uh, technically. It has been mirrored in uh, some delays with the Madagascar government, but uh, they are just passing or passed a new mining code and stability agreement. So we're, we're, we're quite confident that they're going to get approvals this year to go forward. And if it's not this year, next year, so we see it as a absolutely uh, world-class asset to put into our corral as we build out a world-significant uh, rare earth um, production capabilities with a real quality asset that fits perfectly into our wheelhouse. Right. Okay. So the mineral sands. There's. I mean, what's, the, what, what's the? You talk about monocyte there. Obviously, in terms of um, byproducts and and and. Uh, Contributors towards the bottom line. What, what else are we looking at in that? Zircon, rutile, and ilmenite. So, um, okay. you know, so that those are the, those, it, again, this is a very uh, profitable mine on those uh, elements alone. Uh, it doesn't need monazite or rare earth prices to be profitable. So, that's one of the exciting things about this is that this is a project that stands on its own without the monazite. And, matter of fact, for years, they, nobody even wanted to talk about the monazite. But when you add the combination of the, the, the heavy mineral sands and the monazite, it is really a standout, uh, or we believe will be a standout in due course when it's developed and operating. Right. Okay. Now, obviously, the North American factor comes into play here. You know, we've seen sort of Chinese going and wrapping up these large scale projects, you know, globally, but the, the North American, you know, critical minerals hub, you know, which you have at White Mesa. Um, and I guess the the burgeoning need um, of the North American market. Do you, 
do you does this help not just your plant but does this help you with conversations internally getting those sort of um that kind of government backing is it help with opening up new markets in the north american market for you look i think i think that the the combination of assets that we're acquiring fits right in the wheelhouse of the united states government uh from a bipartisan perspective because we're covering places like brazil australia and africa so i i think this is just going to be the beginning of a lot of wins for energy fuels you know, there's been people who have been out there doubting that, you know, why would we uh, diversify uh, into things like rare earths when the uranium business is good? And it is good. And we're we're capitalizing on the uranium business right now. But this is a really, really nice bolt on, uh, as I said, of world significance with really excellent cost structures in due course. Right. Well, and also, I'm just, I'm just thinking about so some of the factors that this brings brings into play, such as mitigate or diversifying your, your, your risk profile, m- mitigating some of those factors. Now, rare earths were, you know, shooting up last year it's, 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 before it kind of came off a bit. You know, uranium has been through its, its rise. It's on the up at the moment. I mean, what does this do for the kind of revenue potential for your company for white for white mesa and, and in terms of your board's view about how you do, how you continue to diversify risk yeah well i mean i i, th- I think I, as i said the basis um uh, at dfs and pfs for the heavy mineral sand and monazite uh, they indicated that the average ebitda over you know several decades was going to be around that uh 350 to 400 us per year at ebitda and, uh, and, and, and that is just basically selling those products. It's not getting the value add. So we think that we can get further value add by processing the monazite into separated products, uh, heavies and lights. And, uh, so it, again, it fits in, it, it fits into an area where we can get additional value out of, uh, the acquisition with base in totally R and their expertise, uh, while we still have uh, revenue from uranium and the price uranium's up. So, you know, it, it, you know, everything we do, Matt, and, you know, I've said this before, has radioactivity involved with it. Now, the heavy mineral sands aren't radioactive, but the monazite certainly is. But, and we can recover the uranium from that monazite. I mean, just the, the, the uranium recovery from the monazite is somewhere in the order of around 75,000, 75, a thousand pounds of uranium per year at around eight or nine dollars a pound. So it's not a lot of uranium, but it's low cost uranium. And so that's another just uh, another, uh, uh, you know, cherry on the on the cake here for us and how we can monetize uh, the uranium when others are just going to throw it away. Right. OK. And listen, let's stick with the, ba- the base resources, still, if, if we may. So you, you said to me in the past, you know, you want to build up this, this rare earth component, this additional arm of, of, of revenue and opportunity. Um, and you you compare yourself to M- MP and, and Linus or wanting to compare yourself to MP and Linus. So obviously, you know, um, they are multi-billion dollar uh, companies. Where does this deal put you in relation to them and in, in maybe in terms of production profile or, or potential EBITDA? I think catching up really quickly. Okay, we still have to get these projects uh, up and running. Uh, we still need to do the, we, we've got the phase one uh, separation plant uh, being commissioned right now. And we still need to build out the phase two, phase three uh, at the mill for the uh, larger uh, rare earth circuit. But what it what it shows is that we are building the molecules and building the skill set, and we have the skill set to do the separations with this phase one, and uh, that puts us in an ideal position to move on to phase two. Um, you know, as we build this feed up. So our goal is: look, everyone has their own business plan. You know, Linus has been successful in what they do. MP is uh, also a significant mine in the United States focus on bassinocyte, um, Linus is focused on hard rock monazite, and we're focused on monazite sands from heavy mineral science operations. So we all have our own business plan, So, and we all need each other to be successful to provide enough elements for this energy transition and electrification. So I would just say that we're doing and driving our bus and securing this additional feed or project in, in the context of the other projects we have 
I hope it sends a clear message to people. We are in this seriously as a very nice compliment to our uranium business uh, and our ability to handle um, uh, the uranium and the radioactivity associated in these kind of feats. Right. Okay. So this isn't a case of um, um, promoting and riding the momentum wave. This is building a real business, generating real revenues. That's the goal. Absolutely. And that isn't always the goal of everybody. So you know, we're focused on a profitable, high margin um, earnings company uh, of significant scale. And, um, and, 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 and that's what we're executing. So, I mean, if you look at the timeline when we got into the rare earths four years ago and the rare earth prices were high and you look at the advances we made with making a carbonate, partially separated product, acquiring Bahia, um, uh, getting an MOU with uh, Astron on um, uh, the Donald project, starting commissioning a phase one, and now this announcement, I think we're making pretty solid progress here. We're not just sitting on our on our on our, our bums. Yeah, it's it's um, it's very interesting, interesting times in, in, indeed. And we, is this um, potential first of additional? Um, deals, similar deals, whether whether they be mergers, acquisitions, or um, or agreements for feed. I mean, how do you view the future? Is this enough to keep you going for a while? This is enough to keep us going for a while, but you know we're looking at uh, full integration. We have an initiative to move beyond the separation of the lights and the heavies into the metals and alloys. So we're working on that, and the step after that is is magnets. So. So we're looking for full integration. Um, you know, we're funding a lot of this on the back of the uranium um, uh, uh, business that we have that is 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 ramping up rapidly. So um, it's just a very interesting time, Matt. And uh, but we're focused on long term value for shareholders, not just a run up in the share price just for the sake of uh, pushing the share price up. So you know, we're builders and doers. We're not promoters. Okay, and let's let's go to uranium because the people that, you know, there's a lot of cry, um, cries from people out there going, "I wish they'd stick to the, um, the uranium um, and forget about the rare earths." And, and I think perhaps this answers the, that that question for sure. I hope, hope it does, and or we can certainly talk about it into the future. But back to uranium, um, uranium's been on a run. It's kind of reset back down at lower levels, taking that kind of shine off the momentum play, but still. In terms of real businesses, you've got to feed that mill. So you're mining, and are you doing the um, the buying schedules that you talked about, or are you talking? Yeah, to we're the, we're, we're talking to people about uh, you know and buying it, schedules, yeah. and and we're probably going to custom make them for each operator because it's probably not going to be very many people that would actually take us up on that, or even have a mine ready to sell us ore. So um, no, we, we're planning to. Um, uh, try to sign up a couple parties to to provide feed to the mill under a buying schedule. And, you know, and Matt, you know, and I think I've told you, we're never getting out of the uranium business. I mean, I've been doing this for 48 years. And when I go underground, I want to grab a jack leg and start mining uranium. So, you know, it's just about adding the maximum long-term value for our shareholders. That is why we're doing what we're doing but I'll never get out of the uranium business. And anyone who thinks I'm getting out of the uranium business, uh, don't lose any sleep over that. You can talk to my wife and she'll say, he'll never get out of the uranium business. She's tried. Uh, right. <laughs> okay, but I want to be clear. So these these are inbound conversations. You're not going chasing anyone. Is, is that what you're saying? Well, we, we, we publicly said we are looking at a buying schedule and there's been right. some inbounds and um, and maybe even a few outbounds, but we're building the source of feed to the mill. I mean, we've got uh, Pandora and LaSalle operating. We've got um, we've got uh, the Pinion Plain mine, a mining right now operating, and we're bringing feed in. That is a hungry mill. And if we can buy product to, to, to process or ore to process through that mill, and it makes sense to us, uh, we'll, we'll certainly consider buying it. Okay. Mark, appreciate you making the time um, to talk to us, hot off the press. Um, come back and tell us more when you're allowed to, okay? Will do. Exciting times, Matt. Thank you very much.